Hi everybody and welcome back to this second video taking a look at the fundamentals of NUG63's particle system. Now in the second part we're going to take a look first of all at the channels. Now channels can be thought of as subsets of particles onto which you can apply different effects and forces but the good thing is that you don't have to split them off into separate pipes they can all be maintained in a single particle system. So let's take a look at exactly what I mean. So underneath here, I've got our basic particle set up, very similar to the ones that we had in video one. We've just got our Nuke logos falling down with a little bit of gravity. And underneath this, the first thing I'm going to do is add in a particle bounce node. So let's double click this and view it to have a look at where it sits within the scene. So our particles should be expected to fall down with gravity, bounce off of the plane and go from there. So let's take a look at exactly what happens. And as you can see, the particles are actually falling through the bounce plane. And uh, don't worry, this is actually a feature, it's not a bug. Within the particle bounce node, what we have is our external and internal bounce modes that we've seen before. And I've set both of these to none. The important part is that next to both of these modes, we have this new channel setting. And this basically says whenever a particle falls through this bounce plane, change its channel from the original one into channel B. Now when we emit particles, if we take a look up in the scene at the particle emitter, we can see that the channels are going to emit into channel A. So the way it works is when they emit, they're in A, they fall down with gravity, and as soon as they pass through this point, they change from channel A into channel B. Now underneath that bounce node, I have another one. And if we go in and take a look at the properties for this guy, you can see that when particles fall through this bounce plane, they're going to change from channel B into channel C. And then underneath this, I have a final one. If we take a look at this, I just zoom out slightly. You can see that our new channel in this case is channel D. So just to clarify, from the very top, we're emitting in channel A. We fall through the first bounce plane and change to channel B. Then we fall through the second one and change to C and fall through the last one. Finally, our particles are stuck in channel D. So what we're going to do is use all of these channels to then apply different effects to each set. So underneath this, we've got a node which we haven't seen before at this point, and this is the particle expression node. Now, I will be doing a short video on this one alone, and that will be coming up shortly. Uh, but for now, all you need to know is that the particle expression node, if we take a look, is basically going to allow you to affect any of these variables of the particles over time. So right now, I've got this value in our first expression node, and what this is saying is basically change the color to an R value of 1, a G value of 0, and a B value of 0 as well. And because we have our blend mat applied further up in our scene with the value set to modulate, our color is going to get affected. So if I view our particle expression node, what we'll see is that particles get emitted and keep our Nuke logo, but as soon as they fall into this set, they become red. Now the reason they're only affecting things at this point and not at emission is because on the conditions tab at the very bottom, I've set our channels to B. Now if I was to set this back to say none and then set it to A, it would affect all of the particles from the point of emission. So what I'm gonna do is set this back to B and just turn off our A channel as well. So we maintain our nuke logo at the top, fall through this plane and turn red. Our second particle expression node, if we go over and take a look at the conditions, is set to C. And in the particle expression tab itself, we've set the color to zero on R, one on G, and zero on B. So this should, if we view it, change particles from red to green as soon as they fall through this bounce plane. So let's have a look. And you can see that's exactly what's happening. Now another thing of note is that if we take a look at the actual nodes themselves, underneath the node name, in parentheses, we have the channel that's currently being affected. So this is a very quick way of seeing exactly what's going on within your particle setup. So on our third particle expression node, if I zoom out slightly further, you can see that whatever's going on within this node is only going to affect channel D. So it's only going to affect the particles once they fall through this final bounce plane. So let's view that. And you can see that what I'm doing is turning the particles back to their original color. But in here, I've also set the size to take the current size on this frame and multiply it by 1.04 on the next frame. Now, I'll be explaining this in a lot more detail in the expressions video. However, for now, all you need to know is that this is going to increase the size of the particles over time. 
Now this doesn't only affect the particle expression node. If we go on down here, I've got a particle wind node, and the first thing you can tell by looking at it is that it's only going to be affecting the D set or D channel of particles. And so if I view this particle wind, this force is only going to come into effect as soon as there are D particles within our scene. So they're only being blown by this wind as soon as they fall through this final bounce plane. So now that we understand particle channels, I'm going to quickly return to my basic particle setup tree and show you that node that I promised to show you earlier, and that was in fact the particle spawn node. Now if we take a look at this node itself, underneath the name you can see that we've got a B in parentheses, which means that whatever's happening within this particle spawn node is only affecting the B channel of particles. But as we've already experienced, within the particle emitter node, by default, the particles are set to emit in channel A. So where is this mysterious channel B coming from? Well, it's actually being generated within the particle bounce node. So if we take a look at this, next to setting my internal bounce mode, I've set a new channel of B. Now what this means is that the particles are going to be emitted in channel A, they're going to fall down with gravity, and as soon as they bounce on this plane, they're going to be moved from channel A into channel B. And it's at this point that our particle spawn node can come into play. So let's not wait any further. I'm going to go down and view the result of our particle spawn node. And what you can see is that we get these kind of trails or tails coming off of these bouncing particles. So if we go into the particle spawn node itself, we can see a couple of things of interest that tell us why this is happening. Now, first of all, our conditions tab, the channels is set to B. So that explains why we're only getting these tails as soon as we hit this bounce plane, because that's when the particles are being moved into channel B. In the particle spawn node itself, we've got things very familiar to the values that you find within the particle emitter node. So things like rate, half-life, velocity, size, and spread. All of those kind of settings are available to you separately on the spawn particles as well as the originally emitted particles. Finally, in this section, we've got the channels at the top here, and that is currently set to C. So as soon as we get these spawn particles, there are going to be three sets of particles existing within your scene simultaneously. That will be the originally emitted particles in channel A, bounced particles in channel B, and spawned particles in channel C. Now there are a couple of ways that we can go in and change the look of these particles now that we've set this up. On the particle spawn node itself, we actually have this particle pipe. So if you did want to change the texture being applied to the spawned sprites, you would just plug it into here and that would happen pretty much instantly. But because we put these into a separate subset or a separate channel, we could actually go in and add something like a particle expression node and have this only affect our spawned particles. So in the conditions tab over here, I'm going to go into my channels, I'm going to set that to none, and then set it to only exist on our spawned particles, which is channel C. And then in the particle expression node, I'm going to set our size down to 0.25. And as you can see, we're only affecting the size of our spawned particles within the scene. So there are a lot of different ways that you could go and utilize this by putting particles into different subsets, changing the forces, changing the looks that are affecting your spawned particles, and I'm sure you're going to have a lot of fun with it. So finally in this video, we're going to take a look at the subframe settings that you could apply to your particle systems. Now right now in this scene, I've got a very, very simple particle setup. It does look a little bit more complex than our previous ones, but that's only because I've got some animation attached to our mission geometry. So it's going to travel up this spiral over time. Now the one thing you'll notice about this setup is that in between the particles there is a little bit of a gap. And the reason behind this is that when the particle emitter is set with an emission rate of 1, we're going to emit one particle per frame. We don't emit particles in between frames, and that's what causes this little gap. So to fix this, what we could do is bring in a particle settings node. And within this node there is one control, and one control only, and that is steps per frame. Now the way this works, if I just pause this quickly and zoom in, if we take a look at these first three particles in this setup. Right now, with a steps per frame value of 5, as soon as I view this node, we're going to take this first particle and replace it with five new particles that will be evenly spread out between this one here and this second one. It will then do exactly the same thing for the next gap in our sequence, so this particle will be replaced by 5, which will be evenly spread out to fill in this gap. And it will just iterate down through filling in every particle with 5 new ones evenly spread out to create a nice streak of particles. Now there is one more thing to this, so if I view the particle settings node right now, 
even though we have set our steps per frame, we're not seeing that nice full streak. Now the reason being is that although we've told the particles to have five steps per frame, we haven't actually generated that many particles yet. So we need to go back into the particle emitter and use our steps per frame as a multiplier of our original emission rate. So in this case, our emission rate is one, we're emitting one particle per frame. So I'm gonna multiply this by our steps per frame value, which is five. So this is going to emit five particles per frame, which will then get evenly spread out and give us a result that looks a little bit like this. So we get a much more filled in streak now, which if I zoom out and click play, is going to travel all the way up this spiral in our scene. Now it is worth noting that because this is essentially a multiplier of the number of particles within your scene, the particle settings steps per frame field is something that you do want to keep an eye on. If you just put this up to 100, you will find your scene will slow down a little bit. So you want to keep it at the bare minimum for the amount that you need in the final render. So in this case, 5 looks pretty good, so I'm going to leave it at that. Now one other thing just quickly to notice is that because this is a sprite setup, we are getting these little hot spots at the front here, but this isn't visible in the final render. So that's it for this video showing the fundamentals of the brand new particle system in Nuke 6.3. We've covered basic setups, bounding boxes and regions on forces, channels and subsets of particles, as well as subframe settings and spawning settings as well. Hopefully you'll have enough to get up and running as quickly as possible, and I'll see everybody in the next video.